have to do now is uh, you will have to write for all the species present inside the plasma. So that basically you can now include by J. The J is basically for electrons, ions, then you have uh, neutrals, and then you have impurities. You are able to see the board? Yes. Yeah, sir. One of you, can you tell me? Yes. Board sir. is fine? So basically, yes, you have to write this uh, momentum equation now for all the species which makes the whole plasma. So plasma, may basically, you have got electrons, ions, neutrals, which are not ionized. And then there are certain impurities present inside the plasma. So let us assume that the plasma is the fully ionized. So you don't have neutrals. And also, we'll say that the amount of uh, impurities are very insignificant. So, you don't have to write equations for this. So, basically, you may have to write equations for these two. Electrons and ions. So, essentially, what this equation tells you is, it's a basically a momentum transfer equation. So, you have a fluid element which is under the influence of the magnetic field and the electric field. And also there's a momentum transfer. So that is how the particle, the elements move in the fluid. So this essentially tells you equation of motion for the fluid element. Okay. So there's a very big assumption that we have made here. And I think I'll have to discuss a little bit about that. So essentially, Uh, we'll discuss what is uh, the fluid approximation. Under what approximation can we write an equation of this kind? So, essentially, you know that uh, so these fluid elements basically they are particles of uh, average velocity, same average velocity. So they all move together. So for the present, we have neglected the collisions. But uh, even the thermal effects we have reduced because we say that the whole the particles are all cold. You know. We'll see the, what are the effects of thermal effects on these. Uh, suppose you try to increase the temperature, what happens to these, these equations? So you'll have to remember one thing very important is that these equations are applicable only when the when the charge separation is negligible. What do you mean by charge separation? So you have uh, plasma is a collection of particle, uh, positive ions and electrons. So they are all equally homogeneously distributed. If they are homogeneously distributed, then there is no charge separation. But because of some reason, if there is a charge separation, there will be electric fields produced. Because there is a Elect ions and electrons are getting now separated. Once they get separated, just a second. Right? So once they get separated, there's a small dips, uh, distance between them. So there's an electric field produced. So the a very strong assumption that we have made here is that these charge separation fields are very, very small. Okay, if there are charge separation fields, which is electric fields are present inside the plasma, then the fluid approximation is not so valid. So that's an important uh, assumption that we have made. So essentially, which means that the scale lengths that we are talking about are much, much larger than the divide length. So probably you must have already been introduced to the concept of divide length. So, you know, divide length. Mm -hmm. 
so so that is the equation for the device length so we are talking about scale lengths which are much much larger than this scale length so that the charge separation fields are negligible okay so that is one of the important assumptions that we have made other important assumption that we have made is time scales so we are not talking about very fast time scales so we are all we also now we have to do one more thing which is the omega p so i hope you people have been introduced to these concepts excuse me yeah akash yes sir yes sir. yeah pratik any one of you so yes, you are sir. introduced to this concept yes sir yes sir so, so we are talking about an assumption where the time scales of interest here are 1 over m omega p tau which is of the order of omega p which is omega p is typically in gigahertz now hundreds of gigahertz so we are talking about time scales which are much much larger so anything smaller than that fluid picture will not work for that so that is also an important assumption so you should remember when these equations are valid okay so it's a very important uh, assumption that we have made that time scales are larger than 1 over omega p so omega p is typically for any plasma if you calculate typically hundreds of uh, gigahertz so this will be 10 to the minus 9 so nanoseconds we are not talking of any events which are faster than nanoseconds and the time scale, the space scale is larger than the device length so these are the two important assumptions which you will have to really remember under which these equations will be valid and a plasma will behave like a a fluid okay so basically we will have to write the charge density as ni qi plus ne qe and then the current density is basically n e b plus so that is how and also you will have to see how the maxwell's equations will get modified you can write maxwell's equations for all the particles and then that is how you can get this whole e uh, equation for all the species so we will be writing separately for electrons and ions okay so that is the fluid equation now let us see how this fluid equation can be uh what kind of uh, different types of uh, results it will give examples and what are the uses of this particular uh, equation okay so from this equation you will see that and when you work out for example some perturbations like you have velocity given by basic velocity plus a small difference small change so this is because of the uh disturbance inside the plasma similarly you can write density equal to the basic density plus the density which is fluctuating because of the so similarly you can write all these equations for the perturbed quantities okay so now from that let us see how we can get certain uh, examples of different uh, plasma phenomena 
so instead of writing for just u you are writing this equation for u not plus u prime u prime is the fluctuating quantity in the plasma okay when you write down this equation this equation is basically equation with the the basic factor the there is a variation above the the basic factor so this equation we are not interested so the equation which relates to the changes inside the plasma because of the fluctuations inside the plasma so disturbance caused by the plasma motion so those equations now all these things equations will become something like this so they are all perturbed quantities now okay we are not so we have removed the the total amount see total amount above which there is a variation so the variation part we have taken into account so now you will see that this term is basically u prime squared so in a very small quantity square of that will be even smaller so such quantities can be neglected so doing that let us see what we can get and um, once you remove this portion let us compare this quantity this term with this term when you compare this term you will see that this is m n and because a perturbation can be written as say if it is u u not plus u prime so u prime is basically into exponential i k plus i omega q so essentially what i am saying is that the perturbed quantity would look like exponential i omega t plus k x so in the time temporal variation and the spatial variation so now if you take uh, d by dt this is basically i omega so that quantity i will now put into the comparison and check whether the two terms this term and this term how they compare so that comparison if you write it will come to m n i omega d per divided by so this quantity is basically omega by omega c you know what is omega c is e d by n so e d by n so this is omega so omega by omega c so this is of the order of this quantity i am comparing this uh, term i am comparing with this term so this is basically like omega over omega c okay so these two terms now will give rise to a particular physical phenomena which we will see now so therefore zero is equal to q
Because we are taking a static condition, so there is no time variation. dv by dt becomes zero. So left hand side becomes zero. First term is dv by dt. Second term was u dot uh, del dot uh, v. So that term anyway we said it is small because it's a square of a quarter quantity. So u square time. So it's much smaller than the first term but the first term we are now dv by dt there's no time variation so dv by dt is zero so now this expression comes out to be this now from here if you right as e cross b i'm crossing it with b This should also be equal to zero. So this quantity, the vector quantity, we can uh, write it in terms of two particular terms. So that will come out to be. Okay. So from this, you can see that this term is zero. So therefore, let us write down. So from this, we can write an equation for V per velocity in the perpendicular direction to the magnetic field. So this can be written as E cross B by E squared minus So these are the two terms that you get. So the first term is basically nothing but the E cross B drift. E cross B drift. And the second term is called the diamagnetic drift. So which is proportional to the pressure gradient. So So this is one term. The second term is basically called this term is called the diamagnetic drift velocity. So the two thing gets divided into two kinds of drifts. One is because of the E cross B drift. The other one is called the diamagnetic drift. So diamagnetism is basically the response of the plasma to the external magnetic field. So if you have a gradient in the magnetic field, in the pressure, it will look something like a, you will have particles distributed 
but you have more density at one location, less density at other location. So more density location will look like more particles with gyration because there's a magnetic field. So there's a gyration. So because of that, you'll feel as if there's a particles are moving in one direction because there are more particles and all the larmer radius they'll interact with each other and then therefore you'll see something like a drift so this is called the diamagnetic drift and it is arising because the response of the plasma to the external magnetic field and a gradient of pressure available there so this gradient of pressure something it was some uh, it is a uh, leads to drifts of particles so which is a very important uh, concept okay so this is one important application of the fluid uh, equation so one of the there are two drifts this is called the e cross b drift the other one is called the diamagnetic drift so you'll observe that whenever there is a plasma and with a particular pressure gradient you'll see that there are something some drifts taking place with respect with which is opposite to both the pressure gradient and the magnetic field is perpendicular to both so that is how you can lose particles from the plasma because of this drift Okay, so this is one important uh, application of that particular equation of motion. So other important applications are basically, you can write a, a generalized Ohm's law. Which is basically V e plus V cos N V, which is theta J. This is the normal uh, Ohm's law plus second term which has one over N V e J cross V minus the gradient of pressure. This term is called the Paul effect. This experiment you have done in MSC, Paul effect. So this basically comes out from the generalized Ohm's law. So otherwise, the otherwise Ohm's law is E is equal to E of J. So these are the extra terms that get added up because of the pressure gradient and the J cross B. J cross B is coming because of the A, N and E, N E B. So that is the, so this particular factor is called the Ohm's, the all effect. Okay, also there is a very interesting application of this uh, fluid equation. It is called the frozen in field. I will tell you exactly what they are. So you have a plasma and then you have the, the magnetic fields. You know? These are the magnetic fields and the red ones are all the plasma. So now when the plasma resistivity is Infinite, tending to infinity, plasma resistivity. What happens is the field lines get frozen inside the plasma. These are this concept is called frozen in field lines. The field lines are frozen into the plasma. So wherever the plasma goes now, if the plasma Basically, if it turns this way, 
what will happen is even the fields will turn this way because the field lines are frozen inside the plasma it's a very very interesting concept see the field lines cannot break now because the resistivity is infinite if the resistivity is not infinite then there can be diffusion of magnetic fields or dissipation of magnetic energy so it can break and then reconnect but here it cannot happen because the conductivity is infinite so field lines cannot break so wherever the plasma goes if the plasma goes this way so the field lines will also follow that it will have its own structure but it will have to follow the plasma so very interesting concept so this is happening in almost all the plasmas if whether it is a star or the sun or whatever tokamak plasma everywhere you have this kind of activity which means the magnetic field lines are now frozen inside the plasma so wherever the plasma whatever the plasma does the field lines also had to behave similarly it cannot go against that so these are called concept of frozen in field lines okay very reason that it cannot break up we'll see where the conditions where it can break up and reconnect and things like that but here what is happening is because the resistivity is infinite the field lines cannot break now there's no dissipation of magnetic energy so all the energy gets frozen inside the plasma and wherever the plasma goes the field lines have to follow that it's very interesting so now what are the conditions now suppose i take another thing which is not infinite it is finite then there is a finite resistivity which means there is a resistance so that resistance can cause the magnetic fields to dissipate their energy so now the field lines what it will do is instead of going along with the plasma wherever it is going it will wherever such a thing happens it breaks here so it forms a blob something like that so plasma breaks up now because it has a it can break up now it can join this way earlier it was not able to do that because of this condition now because of this condition at this point the magnetic energy can dissipate so whatever magnetic energy you have got it can dissipate or it's called diffusion of magnetic energy So you can write a magnetic Reynolds number. so resistivity and then uh, permeability and this is the factor which is the something like viscosity because of, and this is the length of course so this is something like viscosity or resistivity so this is something which is quite important so one thing is that we derive the diamagnetic drift uh, velocity so there's a drift so that is coming as an example from the some application of the 
fluid uh, equation. The second was the generalized Ohm's law. Then third one was frozen in field lines. Frozen in field lines concept. The other one is magnetic diffusion or magnetic energy gets dissipated. So that dissipation basically gets converted into kinetic energy of the particles. That is how during the reconnection process, you'll see that in a particular concept happening inside the sun. When there is a magnetic uh, reconnection, there is a dissipation of magnetic energy. So that magnetic energy gets converted into kinetic energy of the particles. And that is how particles are thrown out. So you'll see that uh, coronal mass ejection or something of that sort you must have heard of, you know, jets of uh, plasma particles being thrown out from the, plasma, uh, from the sun. So that is because of this concept that there is breaking of field lines because of finite resistivity. Okay. And this breaking of field lines can cause dissipation of magnetic energy which gets converted into kinetic energy of the particles. And that is how particles are thrown out from the various uh, plasmas. It can happen from the sun. It can happen from dopamine plasmas. We have observed lots of these activities happening inside the dopamine plasma. So any fusion uh, plasma experiment, you'll observe all these uh, things happening. So the moment you start seeing jets of particles being thrown out, you can assume that certain instability of this kind is taking place inside the plasma. So there is the magnetic reconnection process going on and this magnetic reconnection process in which there's a dissipation of magnetic energy. So this energy is now dissipated into particles. So particles gain energy because of this. So dissipation of magnetic energy feeds to kinetic energy of the particles. So that is how particles are thrown out of the plasmas. So from the sun, you must have observed lots of these act. Now, especially with this uh, Parker solar probe, basically has been sent to study these particles being thrown out from the sun. So the process there is magnetic reconnection. A very, very important process. Sometime later, I can describe to you uh, exactly what is happening inside the tokamak plasma and a similar thing is happening inside the sun also. So this can be observed by certain diagnostics. So we can measure how much of particles are emitted, what is the kind of uh, acceleration, what is the kind of energy that is brought up by the electrons and you can balance how much of energy was dissipated by the magnetic field so you can do a budgeting of the energy and then that is how you come to know what exactly is happening inside the plasma. So the outcome of this uh, fluid equation has given you this kind of uh, information which is not fictitious, it is observed experimentally also. I will describe to you an experiment sometime later that what exactly is happening inside the dopamine plasma, how magnetic how magnetic field lines are breaking up and reconnecting and in that process how particles are being thrown out. So it is not just theory, I can show you, show you by experiment that these measurements are indeed done and then I can uh, prove that such a thing is happening inside the plasma. So very interesting. So I think I'll stop for today here. And if there are some questions, any questions from you people? Yeah. Very interesting topics, but I don't know how much time I can spend with you people on. I can describe to you very good experiments done on. Uh, Tokomax, where 
actual magnetic reconnections have been observed. And a similar thing is happening in the sun for which the solar Parker probe has been sent. So the solar Parker probe is exactly going to monitor this phenomena happening inside the sun. How much of mass ejection is taking place from the sun because of this process. Okay. There are other processes also taking place where the particles are being thrown out. But this is a major because you have to understand the structure of the sun. You know. Sun is uh, not a rigid body. It's not a rigid body. So what happens is, it's not like Earth. Earth is rigid. So in the sun, what happens when it is rotating, it has a differential rotation. As you go from the equator to the poles, you know, you'll see the movement, the rotation. Rotation frequency keeps on decreasing as you go to the pole. So this causes variations in the magnetic field. What is this magnetic field? It is the, these fields are basically produced by the motion of charged particles. The motion of charged particles produces current, and that current produces magnetic field. So the sun with low magnetic field changes are right, it is basically because of motion of particles. Motion of particles is nothing but current, and that current is basically nothing but magnetic field. So that is how magnetic field measurements becomes very, very important part of the many of these uh, experiments, you know, whether it is tokamak plasmas or the plasmas coming in the sun. So actually, we have borrowed a lot of uh, these concepts from the solar physics people. Solar physics people are experts in these kind of activities, you know. But uh, it so happens that all these activities are going on in the tokamaks also, the fusion devices. So therefore, I'll have to repeat all that solar concepts into the tokamak physics. So you'll find that a person very good in solar physics will be very good in tokamak physics also, because he understands all the instabilities. Basically, it's a motion of charged particles. The motion of charged particles produces electric fields, magnetic fields, and how these magnetic fields are dynamic in nature. So they are produced, they are destructed, they are disrupted, and all those things are happening. And whenever there is a disruption of magnetic field lines, there is a conversion of magnetic energy into kinetic energy of the particles. So that is how this whole field becomes very rich. Okay. So, any question from you people? Sir, then, sir, I have one question. Yeah, please, Pooja, go ahead. Sir, uh, uh, can you explain uh, diamagnetic drift again? Huh. So, actually, what is happening is uh, you have a plasma. If it is a uniform plasma, you know, so you have the same number of particles everywhere, positive ions, negative ions. So then there is no problem. But if there is a pressure gradient, so that was basically gradient cross B. So this was the thing. Yeah. So because of the gradient of pressure, what is happening is some regions of the plasma, this whole plasma is there, some regions of the plasma, you have more particles, more electrons and more ions. So each electron will have a orbit. So this is for ions and electrons. So electrons are moving in this direction. So this is the, because there's a magnetic field, the electrons will start gyrating. So that is how, because of this, you'll have, so if you draw all these things, you know, similarly here, the density is lower. So there's a gradient in pressure. So what I'm showing is number of electrons. Because of the large number of electrons here, now this, there's an interaction between these. So there's something like a drift in this direction, which is perpendicular to both pressure gradient and 
D. So the particles are moving in one direction, and this is basically coming because there is a pressure gradient. If the pressure gradient is not there, there is a movement not coming in the plasma, and this is happening because the plasma is responding to the external magnetic field. So it's a diamagnetism of the plasma. It is trying to throw out the field lines. Whatever field lines are being generated by the external magnetic field will be thrown away by the plasma presence of plasma. So it is modifying the magnetic field inside the region where the plasma is there, and that is happening because of these changes. The field lines are getting pushed out. If the plasma is not present, what will happen is magnetic field lines are straight. The moment I put in plasma particles here, these field lines are now pushed out. There are more field lines outside than inside. There are no field lines, so the plasma is getting rid of the magnetic flux. So that is called diamagnetism of the plasma, and that is happening because of these diamagnetic drifts. So basically, the presence of the plasma particles is such that It will try to reduce the effect of external magnetic field. All the field lines are pushed out. So this region where the plasma is present has no magnetic flux. Is that uh, did I answer your question? Pooja? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, is me. You may have to read a little bit about this uh, diamagnetism of uh, plasma. How? What is the behavior? How does it do? For example, if the magnetic field lines are there everywhere, the presence of my, uh, plasma, how does it push all the particles, all the uh, fluxes out, and make sure that there is no magnetic field lines inside the region where there is a plasma? It's a very interesting concept. It is plasma is trying to. Throw out all the magnetic flux and making sure that that region doesn't have magnetic flux. All the field lines get concentrated outside the region where you have plasma. Yeah. So any more doubt? No, sir. Okay. So that is about today's. Uh... Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir i have one doubt yeah sir uh, it is uh, it is possible that uh, because of uh, excess of energy uh, can magnetic field lines uh, can uh, reconnect or can be combined see i told you if the plasma is very high temperature suppose very high temperature plasma means ray speed is almost infinite then there is no dissipation of magnetic energy so it cannot break only when the plasma is not so hot enough where the resistivity is not infinite it is finite only then this can happen so the uh, resistivity of the plasma is important if the resistivity is zero magnetic field lines cannot break and uh, reconnect There has to be a finite resistance, sir. In our Earth's magnetic field, uh, sir, yeah. there is always a reconnection of a magnetic field lines. So, sir, how uh, it is uh, connected to this phenomena? Oh, same, same thing. Like uh, solar wind, you know, you are talking about solar wind, na? Yes, solar yes, sir. Solar wind coming from the sun. So you have uh, the solar wind coming, and then you have the magnetic field lines of the Earth. So that again has to. now there is a field lines coming from the sun because of the particles there is a current coming from the sun so charged particles so that i have its own magnetic field so that magnetic field interacts with the earth's magnetic field so when there is an interaction of these two so then the field lines will break up and reconnect magnetos uh, there is a concept in uh, mag uh, earth's magnetic field you know So 
you can study that part magnetic uh, magnetic field lines get uh, distorted earth's magnetic field gets distorted because of the solar wind and solar wind is nothing but uh, just a series of particles charged particles coming out the charged particles coming out means it has only its magnetic field so those magnetic fields interact with the earth's magnetic field and there's a distortion of the earth's magnetic field so there can be holes formed so because of those holes the particles will enter into the earth's magnetic field earth's uh, atmosphere otherwise these particles cannot enter they can enter only when they make holes in the magnetic structure of the earth's magnetic field they make holes in that so that particles can push through and come out into that hole and then flood the whole uh, earth's atmosphere so you see the ionosphere you know is something which will not allow these external particles to enter the earth's uh, atmosphere it's basically an interaction between the solar wind and the ionosphere of the earth okay very interesting topics you can um, many of this concept can be studied in atmospheric sciences this comes under atmospheric sciences prl is a a very nice place to lots of experimentalists are there theoreticians working on these areas okay keep so is fine so yes sir generally i have been talking about uh, some general topics so today i am going to talk about something called gaia i i presume you people know about it you know about this system this is where basically a latin like a word which means the living earth earth is living actually it is not just made of inorganic materials it has got organic materials it has got organisms which live so that is basically the it's called gaia means all living earth so it is like a living body it's like a human being so any interaction with that can cause so basically there's a nice book i can i'll uh, share with you people it's called the revenge of gaia so revenge of the living earth see we have done so much of damage to the earth we have removed a lot of resources from the earth so we are basically disturbing the earth so therefore what is now till now what was earth is a very strong a very strong material thing you know a very strong thing which can whatever you do to the earth it can it has a mechanism by which it will uh basically it can take care of whatever bad things you do to the earth it can recover see if i remove lots of earth from a particular thing cause a crater or for example if i am doing mining of coal and basically removing lot of earth earth can manage this so it has a way to take care of this changes that i am making into the earth but the changes that we have made is so much that this earth is not able to now get back recover so it's called revenge of the gaia 
so earth is taking revenge on us because the amount of damage that we have done to the earth is so much that the earth is not able to recover from that otherwise see it has the power to get back come back and then it has resili resilience you know ki aap jo bhi karoge earth ke sath it has a way to absorb that absorb and get back to work you know it's called self regulatory system earth has a very strong self regulatory system so whatever you do to the earth if i remove lot of water from earth or remove lot of mass say coal iron ore i remove all the iron ore still the earth has a way to regulate itself but the amount of damage that we are doing now is so large that the earth is not able to recover so earth is something like a a patient now a patient you know it will fight back you know how um, if a person is not uh, healthy brain wise he immediately fight back so earth is basically doing exactly that we have done so much of damage to the earth that earth has no other way but to react it's not able to recover it is not able to regulate itself now it has lost its power of regulation so there's a nice book written by a british scientist his name is dr james james lovelock he's basically a geophysiologist geophysiologist physiologist kon hota hai physiology means he is a doctor who knows all the physiology of my body similarly this person is basically called geo geophysiologist so earth is something like a human body so he is able to know what all changes are happening to this earth and then what can we do to see that it recovers if it cannot recover then it is going to react in such a way that it is going to cause lot of problems for us so many of this pandemic and all these things they say is because of the revenge revenge that the living earth gaia is nothing but living earth so the living earth is basically trying to take revenge on us to isliye kehte hain dekhiye ki any see for example i want to produce lot of energy so that is one way to do is to do coal mining get lot of coal from the earth use that coal to produce energy so it is not gear uh friendly you know gear friendly means i should be doing mining without disturbing the earth so what are such sources nuclear source is one of them so he talks in this uh, book he talks about the nuclear energy also he what for production of energy you can always you have to do lot of resources you have to get from the earth but then you have to choose a energy source in such a way that you don't disturb the earth so much it has to be gear friendly okay so very very important con very interesting concept i'll share this book with you i think you people can go through it very interesting i hear he talks about why the process of nuclear fusion 
has to be preferred over all other sources of energy. That is because you are not doing any mining at all of this earth. What you are using as a source is just seawater. Deuterium is available in sea. And then you have got tritium. So deuterium and tritium together will produce energy, which is the fusion energy. So he says that nuclear energy in general is a very good, it is a gas friendly energy source of which fusion becomes even more friendly because for nuclear energy, for example, from fission, I have to do mining for uranium. So uranium means I have to do some little bit of mining. Though the amount of energy produced by one gram of uranium is much, much more than few tons of coal. Million tons of coal produces same as one gram of uh, uranium. So therefore he says that in this book he talks about gear friendly energy sources. So nuclear, nuclear fusion is a very, very good source of energy, which has least impact on the Earth's biosphere. Okay. So I can read out one of the sentences that he talks about. It's called Earth System Behavior as a Single Self-Regulating System comprise, comprises of physical, chemical, biological, and human concept components. So this is the definition given by James Ludlow. I share this book with you people. You can read this book. Very interesting. Here he talks lots about the nuclear energy and also about fusion energy. So once you read this book, I will share with you another book, which is called Nuclear Renaissance. Next time I'll share that book with you. So you can read about this very interesting concept. Maybe many of you would have never even heard of such a thing. Maybe some of you have heard of it also. And that earth is like a living body. It will behave exactly like a human being. It's a very interesting concept. You should not be doing too much of damage. See the population, our human population is like cancer for this earth. More number of people are creating more problems for the earth. So earth will try to react and see that it gets rid of this cancer. So the population of human being is like a cancer for the earth. It's a very interesting concept. So this also tells you, this also makes you very sensitive to this earth. That what we are doing with this earth, we are removing resources like mad. We are doing so much of damage to this earth. Sometimes we don't even know that we are doing damage to the earth. But if you have sensitivity to this, you know, sensibilities, that earth is also living like us, then you will not be doing such a damage to the earth. So I think uh, very interesting for you scientists to read this, become sensitive to earth and see how earth is trying to take revenge. Very interesting. Okay. I think I'll share this book with you people. Please read this and give your feedback. I think we can have a lot of discussions on this. Interesting concept. I like the concept. Also, I liked it because I'm working for nuclear fusion. So I go to various colleges, schools to propagate that nuclear fusion is one of the best sources of energy. So these books give me a lot of uh, scope and a lot of confidence. In what I'm doing is right. So fusion has to be pushed hard and see that oil and other like coal and other things like that should be stopped. We should not be doing any mining for that which is basically disturbing the whole 
earth's uh, earth system you know okay thanks a lot so we'll meet again and discuss more interesting things i think i'll close down see you people have a good day